So we're here today talking about cracks and crack repair. Just a couple of things before we begin. There are a whole myriad of different ways and different techniques that people do crack repair. I'm going to show you a couple that I found have worked pretty well. For me, doesn't mean they're the only way. I'm not saying the other ways are wrong, and in fact, many of them have all kinds of merit. But given that we don't want this to turn into a three-day video uh, on the nature of filling cracks in wood, I'm just going to show you a couple of um, pretty foolproof ways to achieve, hopefully, a very good result when you're doing crack work. So a few things. Number one, by the very nature of this work, you're working with tools that are sharp, glues and woods that may have toxicity or they can hurt people's hands or eyes. Please remember to be safety conscious. Wear a mask. For today, I'm not going to because otherwise the video is going to sound like, which won't work very well for this purpose. But typically, we either use a full respirator, depending what we're doing, or at the very least, uh, something that will filter out most of the contaminants that you would be dealing with. Eyeglass safety is really important. Please use it. My glasses are safety rated, so I'm not going to wear it for today. And then typically, you may want to wear some gloves. Now for this, I wouldn't use your best leather gloves that you're going to use on New Year's Eve, but simple disposable gloves, either nitrile or latex. Uh, I prefer the unpowdered ones simply because the powder tends to get on the instruments. When you're doing crack work, you want everything to be uh, quite clean and the powder can cause some problems. So a few things. The area that you're going to work in, please move things like sharp implements, tools, razor blades beforehand so there's nothing that's going to either mark the instrument when you put it down or potentially hurt you. So I like to use rubber matting because it's very soft on the instrument and in this case anything that there may be dust which will fall through doesn't get on the instrument. So I have selected for us today a few things that we may find interesting. First of all, we're going to look at a video monitor over here. This is a crack from the register key. And as we zoom up, we'll notice quite clearly that it's a crack. And you can usually tell a crack as opposed to uh, surface grain, because if it's grain, usually it looks like dots and dashes, a little bit like Morris code. If it's a crack, you'll see a solid line. And in this case, as I zoom up, you can see pretty clearly that's a solid line. It's bigger near the tone hole speaker vent, getting slightly smaller towards the shoulder, in this case, where the tendon cork would be. And you can see this instrument, which is an upper joint of a B-flat clarinet, has a crack in a very, very common location, which is above the speaker key or the register key. Please don't call it an octave key, because on clarinets, it doesn't play an octave, it plays a 12. You'll see a line going all the way from the vent up to the shoulder, and in fact, in this case, just a small bit you can see into the tenon as well. So we're going to fix this one. But before we do a real instrument, we're going to take a couple of practice uh, runs at a, a raw joint. So let's talk a little bit about what you're going to need to do basic pinning work on a crack. And we'll start with pinning and move to some other techniques a little further along in uh, the video. So pinning is basically simply described as we drill a series of holes, it can be anywhere from one to, it could be 10, down the instrument, crossing and hopefully avoiding tone holes or other critical junctures, and then using an adhesive and the pin to hold everything together. There's basically two common kinds of pins used. One of them are threaded metal pins, in different sizes depending what you need to uh, do and where you're trying to fit. The other option are carbon fiber or graphite rods which are available in different sizes as well. These are not threaded compared to the metal instruments uh, pins which are threaded. You should have a caliper, hopefully digital, which can either be in metric or in thousands of an inch if that's your preference. There are different glues which you can use. So the two common kinds of glues are either epoxy, which simply means it's a two-part glue that you mix, and you can get those which set up very quickly all the way to quite long setup time, so it gives you more open time. And open time just means you have more time to work before it hardens. Or you can use 
any one of the new family of superglues are the common name. The technical name is cyanoacrylate. And they come in different viscosities, which again is just a big fancy word for meaning thickness. You can get it where it runs like water, or you can get it where it almost drips like a thick honey. And it comes in either clear or over the last few years, there's been a very interesting development. This is a black rubberized CA. So it has the advantage, first of all, of being black, but one of the other very, very cool things about it is it does expand and contract somewhat with the wood that it's holding. So unlike uh, a harder CA where periodically you can get spider cracks, which are little cracks that form along the, the primary glue line, with the rubberized, it gives you some flexibility. As you work with all of them, you're gonna find out which one works for your particular techniques.